Hello, everyone. In continuation to our lectures on genome mapping, we finished the classification of genome mapping, and then we finished restriction mapping. Today is the third lecture on genome mapping on, and in which we are going to cover optical mapping. Now, what is optical mapping? Optical mapping is nothing but observing the cut restriction sites under a microscope. You cut the DNA with restriction enzymes and observe those sites under a microscope sites under microscope. So now, as you understand, we should know what are the basic requirements of optical mapping. The first one is restriction enzymes. And the next one is you need to stretch your DNA. You need to stretch your DNA so that the DNA restriction enzyme sites are clearly visible. Otherwise, due to the springiness of your DNA, the strain, the DNA gets coiled. So stretching of DNA. And then finally, to observe it under the microscope, you need to stain it. Now, under optical mapping, three major variants. The first one is gel stretching. The next one is molecular combing. The next one is molecular combing. And the last one is bio nano. Last one is bio nano. This is what you have three different variants under optical mapping. Okay. First, we'll have a look at gel stretching. Now, what is gel stretching? See, under gel stretching, your molten agarose already contains your restriction enzymes. You have your restriction enzymes in molten agarose. And this molten agarose also contains your chromosomal DNA. This molten agarose is then allowed to flow through by slanting the slide so that the DNA becomes stretched. You see this stretching of DNA here, the DNA becomes stretched. Now, and after some time, this molten agarose gets solidified. And once it gets solidified, you add magnesium chloride to activate your restriction enzymes. The moment the restriction enzymes are activated, you see that your DNA is cut into pieces. And when your DNA is cut into pieces, you stain your DNA here. And the common stain that is used is nothing but DAPI. And once you stain your DNA, you observe it under the fluorescent microscope. So what do you have under gel stretching? The first thing is you have a molten agarose and then you allow the agarose to flow down and then you activate your enzymes by adding magnesium chloride and then you observe this after staining your DNA with DAPI. So this is one of the variants of your optical mapping. The second variant is molecular combing. Optical mapping, molecular combing. And this molecular combing involves, you have your DNA here. You can see a slide, a cover slip actually. You have a cover slip here. And this cover slip is actually having a layer of silica on it so that the DNA can be attached to it. So what do you do is you dip your cover slip inside the solution of your DNA. And as you move it along, as you move it along, you assume that just because of the presence of silica, these DNA get attached to your one of your one of the areas in your cover slip. So the DNA molecules attached to the cover slip by one end, right? And as you withdraw your cover slip or move it to the top because of the surface tension at this area, this because of this surface tension, this DNA strands which are attached would be stretched. And everything next is similar to that of your gel stretching, wherein you add your restriction enzymes and then 
activate your restriction enzymes and then stain your DNA to observe it under the microscope. However, the major drawback of all this is this was earlier done only by using back clones that are 1 MB in length. And it was not tested for DNA beyond 1 MB in length. And therefore, having maps of 1 MB is of is not of great use as far as genome mapping is concerned. The next technique that is in vogue in the market is the BioNano optical genome mapping. The BioNano optical genome mapping. Optical genome mapping. This technique involves isolation of your ultra high molecular weight DNA. And I mean ultra high molecular weight DNA. It means that you will have long stretches of DNA and you will not be having any shearing in your DNA. This DNA is now taken. For example, you have this double stranded molecule. This double stranded molecule is now taken and an enzyme which is called as DLE1, direct labeling enzyme 1, is used to label the DNA at specific sequence motifs. Means a specific sequence motif is actually recognized by this DLE across the genome and then covalently attaches the green fluorophore to this specific sequence, sequence motif. And this sequence motif repeats at several places in the genome. For example, you have it here again at some other place. So this place is again recognized by the enzyme DLE. And then again, at this place again, you have the specific motif being recognized. And this motif is attached covalently with a green fluorescent dye. After attaching the green fluorescent dye, the next step we do is we need to stain the double-stranded DNA. The DNA is stained. And how is the DNA stained? The DNA is stained with a blue dye. With a blue dye. With a blue dye. Now, the basic purpose of this is when you observe under a microscope, you expect the DNA to be a green thread with spots of fluorophore on it. And this is how you actually observe under the microscope. So now let's see, once your DNA is labeled and stained with blue, you pass that DNA through a microscope. This is a microscope. And this microscope is called as sapphire. This microscope is called as sapphire. And this microscope has got pores through which your DNA passes through. And in the process of passing through the pores, this DNA is stretched as long single thread on which you can clearly observe your glean fluorophores, as you can see in the photograph here. Now what happens? As the DNA passes through, from the negative to the positive. You have a negative here to the positive. As it passes through, snapshots are taken. Let's say that this is the first snapshot that is taken. And then the next snapshot, as the DNA is passing through the pores, is taken. And similarly, I had shown four snapshots taken here. This is the fourth snapshot that is taken along with all the other snapshots. And you combine all these snapshots at this point, and these snapshots are converted into molecules by your software. Into molecules by your software. And finally, once these molecules are constructed, these molecules are finally converted into a genome map. And you have your genome map assembled here based on the sequence that is recognized by the DLE 
across the genome and again, assembling the genome based on the snapshots. This is very much useful for us in the current market for the assembly of the eukaryotic genome, for the assembly of the eukaryotic genome. This technique, this technique is helpful basically for scaffolding of the context, assembly of the eukaryotic genomes, and helps in what? Helps in scaffolding of the scaffolding of your contics, of contics. We will study this in detail when we come to the assembly part of our lectures. Thank you.